So if you have any sense of common decency whatsoever, it probably makes you cringe to even think about sitting down and just writing a book. Write, oh yeah, I'm writing a book. Like that makes me feel a bit sick to say. And if you're anything like me, it's gonna be a similar situation. If, if that isn't the way it is for you, then either you've had practice or you're dead inside. But that's all right. In this instance, it might actually work in your favor. You've got to fight the inner cringe. You've got to fight that part of you that's telling you that just sitting there writing a book is the equivalent to just spending hours jerking off to a picture of yourself. Fight it and move past it. So there's a thing called NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month, which is, by the way, what I'm talking about. And it's generally surrounded by this sort of sickening self-help fervor. I don't want to partake in that or donate to it, but I think in some ways it's unavoidable. Aren't books enjoyable and, you know, nice? Here's a nice book. Good. Well then why don't you write one? Because if you write one, and I fail to, maybe that's going to be some form of consolation. Let's talk a little bit about a man called Carl Sagan. Well, let's just directly quote him. What an astonishing thing a book is. It's a flat object made from a tree with flexible parts on which are imprinted lots of funny dark squiggles. But one glance at it and you're inside the mind of another person, maybe somebody dead for thousands of years. Across the millennia, an author is speaking clearly and silently inside your head, directly to you. Writing is perhaps the greatest of human inventions, binding together people who never knew each other, citizens of distant epochs. Books break the shackles of time. A book is proof that humans are capable of working magic. Who are you to argue with Carl Sagan? You can't, because the man's dead. On the flip side, literature is always written by outsiders, by a person inclined not towards connecting with those around him or her, but retreating into a world of nerdily private dream. To write is to fail, more or less continually. So thank you Tom Bessel for those words. I've just written bits and pieces in the past, which is why I'm pulling quotes from authors, because they actually know this shit and I don't know anything about this shit. Sadly, but maybe next month I'll know something about this shit. Here's the advice from Charles Bukowski. So you want to be a writer? If it doesn't come bursting out of you in spite of everything, don't do it. So we're ignoring his wise words. Tchaikovsky says, A self-respecting artist must not fold his hands on the pretext that he is not in the mood. And that's the kind of shit we need, just to do it joylessly. Just because we have to, right? That's the perfect situation in which to create anything. Susan Sontag says, If I'm not able to write because I'm afraid of being a bad writer, then I must be a bad writer. At least I'll be writing. Yeah, Susan. Now, now, we're, now we're cooking. General tips and tricks from the likes of Ernest Hemingway. The most essential gift for a good writer is a built-in shockproof shit detector. So get one of those installed before the end of this month. Some words from Kerouac is a quick aside that mean nothing but I like. Like Proust, be an old tea head of time. I don't know what that means, but I like the way it sounds. And the second thing I picked out, you're a genius all the time. Thanks. Thanks, Jack. I think you're right. It's doubtful that anyone with an internet connection at their workplace is writing good fiction. Some hard hitting words from Jonathan Franzen, and it hurts, but it's probably true. I'm going to have to disconnect while I write my 1,667 words per day. I'll see how that goes, obviously. I've literally never done that. Never. But I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. Not I'll do it, but I'll try. You see, I already envisage my inevitable failure. And... Oh well. Mm. Oh well. Last point about writing to a horrible deadline, like the 1,667 words per day slash 50,000 words in a month, which is an insane amount of words. If you put all those words together, you get like this. Does writing quickly mean your book is going to be shit? Maybe. But Charles Dickens wrote episodically. His, uh, all of his books, I think, were serialised in the newspaper, so he had to write them, you know, as needed to a very specific deadline. 
likewise. Alexandra du Dumas, who wrote The Count of Monte Cristo, serialized also, so I assume there were similar um, time restraints. And Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky had to write The Gambler and Crime and Punishment simultaneously in order to meet a deadline that ensured he'd have, if he failed to meet the deadline, he wouldn't have any rights to his future books for nine years. And have you read any Dostoevsky? It's pretty fucking good. So we can do this. Doesn't have to be shit, but if it is shit, that's fine. It's an exercise. 